Hey, I'm Mark Tillerson at Tillerson Consulting. In this video, we're going to be looking at Merchant Center issues, specifically the unavailable mobile landing page or unavailable desktop landing page. So what does that mean? What causes those pages to be unavailable and to throw those errors in Merchant Center? And finally, how to fix the unavailable mobile landing page issue. So let's start first with what does that actually mean? So where you're gonna see this is in some notifications like this. So when we're talking about unavailable mobile or unavailable desktop landing pages. Really, it's the same error. It's just a crawler crawling with different devices and finding that that's unavailable. What you will typically find is if the, a page is unavailable on one device, then it will be unavailable on both. So unavailable on one, it will be unavailable on the other. Doesn't necessarily mean that that will happen at the same time. Not all pages are crawled at the same time. So sometimes you will see a mismatch there. So let's head in and just look at some examples of unavailable mobile landing pages. Now this is just one account with one particular issue and we've got five products here which have a HTTP 5xx response. So in this particular case that response from the server effectively what's happening is Googlebot or it, this could happen to a user as well but Google's bot is crawling your feed. It's following that link on in this case a mobile device and it, the server is saying that exists but you can't have it. So that's a, a 500 error. So effectively the page cannot be served to Google's bot and that's why you're getting this 500 response. Other errors you will get in here is basically a 4xx response. So the difference between the two is as I said a 500 error is basically the server saying that page is there but you can't have it I'm not letting you. The 400 error is the page you've requested the product you've requested doesn't exist at all it's been deleted it's gone. So the 500 error that could be caused by a temporary outage on the server it could be really slow server load time so perhaps this crawl is happening maybe the feed is being scheduled to be updated at 2 a.m. every morning and that happens to be when the server is going through some update cycle in which case maybe thinking about change the scheduling when the server is less busy so maybe do it at 4 a.m. if your update cycle on your server is at like 2 a.m. it could be if you're using a content delivery network or some sort of bot filtering where effectively if there are multiple requests on your server then you're or bot software basically says, hang on a minute, you're requesting too many pages, I'm going to block you, in which case that's worth investigating. Talk to whoever looks after your server and your website to see if that could be happening. If you're seeing a lot of errors frequently, a lot of 5xx errors there, then that's probably the first place I would look is to see if there is some blocking issue or something is blocking Googlebot. The 400 errors, if you're getting a whole heap of those, like a high percentage of your products, then that would indicate there is or was a specific problem with your website. Maybe it's down completely. Maybe the URLs of those products have all changed. Could be any number of reasons, but effectively those huge numbers of pages are broken. If you are getting one or two of those, and the same with the 5xx error, then I would troubleshoot back into the feed. So look at the source of the feed, look at the data in the feed if you can, and then check those same URLs manually to see if they are indeed throwing that error. If it is just one or two, then typically what you'll find is that maybe that product has disappeared and the feed is out of date. So the first thing, um, sorry, before I move on, another error you will see here is that it's blocked with robots.txt. So if you go to mydomain.com, whatever your domain is, of course, forward slash robots.txt and see if there is an instruction in there that is blocking any of the product URLs, blocking bots from crawling it. And if there is, you need to undo that to allow Googlebot to crawl those issues. So let's dive in and have a look at one of these unavailable landing pages. And this is is what I would do to go through and trace this. So you can see we've got disapproved or invalid and we can see why that is because we got this unavailable mobile landing page and at 11 11.07 p.m. PST the bot got a 5xx error. Now if we head to the website itself what we can see is actually the page loads perfectly fine. So that looks like a temporary issue in this particular case um, in which case this should clear down on its own. Annoyingly there's nothing you can really do practically to recrawl this. You can just reprocess the feed and see if that kind of kicks the system into gear and that might solve it. Uh, you could wait 
24 hours or more for that to happen so just be aware it's not just going to suddenly fix in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever and also remember that it takes a little while to synchronize Google Merchant Center with Google Ads so again that could take another hour or so sometimes longer sometimes 24 hours or more so just remember that it's not instant just because you recrawled so this one actually I think is just a temporary issue which should clear itself down if we just go back one section the other thing I would do here is then say right okay we've got a number of these let's assume that page was a 400 error what I'd then be doing is saying okay let me go and look at my feed let me make sure that my feed is up to date that it is being refreshed all the time and we can see that the last time this was updated was November the 8th which is today so I can see that that was just recently updated the other thing that causes a lot of issues with Google Merchant Center and the data that you have in there and even issues like this is that the feed coming into Merchant Center isn't updated regularly so if it's not updated regularly that data goes stale it goes out of date and therefore products that aren't in stock are still in the feed because it hasn't been updated for two or three or four weeks or more so really you should update your feed at least monthly I would recommend that if you have a data feed like this site does then you refresh that every 24 hours overnight and if you do any big product updates then you do that manually in the meantime so how you configure that I'll just show you really quickly is if we go into the feeds go into the individual feed and then there are some disapproved items in here not related to this particular issue of unavailable mobile landing pages so if we head into the settings and then we go into fetch schedule you can see that this is set daily from a URL now if there are fetching issues if that's not pulling that through then you need to go investigate this file URL or however that is being fetched to make sure that is still there the next thing to do is actually go to in this case the actual URL okay and then we'll be able to see the feed and from there we can then find if the offending URLs let's say it's a 400 error are the offending URLs actually listed in the feed so what we're doing is starting at the end with the merchant center we're seeing issues are the issues just in merchant center or are they present in the feed so in merchant center is the feed that is being output is that being requested and recrawled regularly if it is then go and check the feed if the feed is out of date then that means you should step back to your server and find out how that is being generated how often that is being generated and then from there you can go back another step into the website itself how are your products actually being exported via this XML feed in this case or whatever method you're using so effectively the process if we reverse that process I just described so the process typically with a feed in this case is you have your e-commerce store that has a database with a whole bunch of products in those products have images and URL price description title all of those attributes that you need to feed into Google Merchant Center so that is all stored in a database you would then use have a plugin or some method of exporting that data that should happen every 24 hours or live almost real time so that when any products are changed in your database on your website the feed automatically updates at least every 24 hours hours then Merchant Center is then programmed here to then go and fetch that every 24 hours so what I would usually recommend is you output from your website at 2 a.m. every morning and you set Google Merchant Center to fetch at 4 a.m. every morning and that means the data is never more than 26 hours out of date okay so and then obviously Google will then go and crawl that data and will update and then your data will be up to date in the Merchant Center so just to go through that process again backwards start with the data in Merchant Center check if those errors are still present and correct so let's just go back let's just go back to diagnostics so we can see we've got these unavailable desktop pages and unavailable mobile landing pages as well we can look at those issues we can qualify are they still issues or are they fixed and we're just waiting for a recrawl if they are still issues then go back one step into your feed check the data in your feed is it up to date if it is up to date then that should just clear down if it's not up to date then take a step backwards and make sure that the feed being output from your website is being output regularly and it's being updated if the issue if that is okay then the issue is in the website itself and somehow your feed or your data so ordinarily I'd strongly strongly recommend that you always fix the data at the source of the data however if you cannot do that then one option that you have is that you can I wouldn't recommend this because you can get into a bit of a mess otherwise but what you can do here is 
view the fixed suggestion and you can manually override this uh, URL. So effectively what we've got is data coming from your feed and then we're overwriting that. And the problem is what happens if you do change that URL for that product at some point? What then happens? Are we using the new URL or are we using this one that you've got overwritten in the merchant center? I'd avoid doing that if you possibly can. The other way you can do it, there's a whole video on our channel about this, which is optimizing your data with supplemental feed. So what you could do there is effectively you list all the product IDs and then you could list the URLs or any other attributes in a sheet and that overrides what's coming from your website from your feed again not recommended because then if you're trying to retrace an issue like this we've then got another step that we've introduced we've got another automation that might cause an error in future with some other things and if you're trying to troubleshoot that we've now got to think about what's in merchant center what's in our feed what's in the supplemental feed what's on the website how often is that updating we're creating more steps in that process so it is an option there is a video on our channel about using supplemental feeds so that is an option you could certainly go and do that the further option is obviously you could just use a Google Sheet and manually create a feed. Again, not really recommended. The ideal solution is to make sure that your feed has the right data in it in the first place. If you are having 4XX errors or 500 errors and those are happening regularly, 5XX errors are likely to be an intermittent issue with your server. In which case, go check your hosting, go check CDNs, things like that to find out if there's some software blocking repeated requests on your server and that could cause that if you're getting a lot of 400 errors then again that could be server related where the website just isn't available at all for periods of time in which case use something like uptime robot or something to monitor that website and find out if that is actually going down all the time and becoming unavailable that's a whole other issue but that's a server related problem if you have 400 errors for individual products then I would check that the feed is up to date all the way back through that path that I talked about and take it from there if you are having significant issues with this and you need some help we'd love to hear from you in the comments and uh, if you are having other issues with Google Merchant Center again with a ton of videos make sure you subscribe to see our new videos on Google Merchant Center and succeeding online with e-commerce and if this really helped you please just give us a heads up in the comments um, give us a like make sure you subscribe for more